Okay, so here in this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of uh, SQL. And when I say basics, I mean like very generic stuff as far as uh, kind of like sorting data, uh, creating new data sets. So uh, SQL is, stands for Structured Query Language. It's abbreviated SQL. And in SAS, we'll be basically using this as an alternative to kind of like the data step. In the data step, we can create, manipulate our data sets. Uh, we can do the same thing with SQL, but a lot of times we can actually save a lot of time by using some of the some of the uh, uh, SQL options that are available to us. <clears throat> so right now I have this data set open. Uh, it's called uh, Savings. Uh, basically has a couple of uh, uh, people's uh, uh, bank accounts with like checking, savings, mortgage, credit card, and the amounts associated <clears throat> with uh, those accounts. Um, and so I want to use SQL to kind of restructure this and kind of create new data sets from this existing data set. So I'm gonna, and I'm going to do this by actually coding. So first thing we want to do is uh, go to File, New, and we're going to create a program. Okay, so we're going to call in, we're going to uh, open up the SQL language, so we just do proc, and then, oops, proc, SQL, semicolon. So first thing I want to do is just print out uh, the entire data set, the one that we just saw, just print it out using SQL. So here for SQL, we used the keyword select uh, to basically choose the the columns or variables that we want to show up in our in our results. So in this case, I just want to print out the entire thing. So to print out everything, we do asterisks. And in SAS coding, you usually end uh, every line with a semicolon or your statements. But here in SQL, we'll keep everything open until the very end to our last kind of statement that we that we uh, uh, code. So we've selected all the variables, and then we have to. Uh, Distinguish what data set we're coming from, so we type in from, and the name of our data set, you can see on the left hand side, is just savings, so I can just type in savings, and that's it. And this will be the end, this is our last statement, so then we end this with a semicolon. In SAS, we usually do run, but here uh, using SQL, we do quit. And then semicolon, and then we can just run this. And there you go, here's our original data set. <clears throat> so, what if I don't want all these variables? Well, I can go ahead go back and specify exactly what variables I want. So in this case, I want to keep mm, just account and the amount. So go back to our program. So I go back to select and I get rid of the asterisks because we no longer want all of our variables. So I'll specify which ones I want. So I type in account. And then when naming multiple vari variables or columns that we want, we separate it with a column or a column, uh, comma, comma, <laughs> comma rather. And so we have account and we want amount. All right, and then we just run it. Great, so there you go. Now we have just, we've extracted just two of our variables that we wanted from our original data set. So, and this is in our results viewer, so we haven't actually created any data sets yet. So one of the cool things about SQL is we can create a data set just with the simple keywords. So we'll do it all over again. We'll go proc SQL. So first thing we're gonna do is now is we're gonna type in create table, this is our keyword, to create a data set. And we'll name our data set accounts. And then we make sure we follow this up with as, is telling SAS that we're gonna create this data set as a collection of whatever variables I choose from specific data sets. So then we go back to our, what we did up here, select. And let's see, for this I want accounts, or account rather, and then value. Same thing with, as we did earlier, or at the top earlier, we do from, just like the data set that we're extracting from, and semicolon, quit. And then run it. Okay, so I have an error here somewhere. So whenever you have an error, the first thing that's going to happen is going to send you to the log. So, and it pretty much tell you what's going on. So you look for the red. So it says the following columns were not found in the contributing tables accounts. So it's telling me right here that it could not find this. And here's the reason why. Because in my data set, it's not accounts. It's actually called account. So I spelled it wrong. So the log just told me exactly where to look, what was wrong. Run it again. 
Okay, here's what we want. <clears throat> so our results are here. It's the same results from the previous run. So, but now we actually created a data set. So our data set will be under output data tab. And here's our new data set. So this is an actual working data set that we can call upon to do analysis or whatever we want to do. <clears throat> so now what if, what's another way that we can create a data set without having to kind of pick and choose uh, what variables we want? Uh, we could pretty much do the exact same things we did at the top earlier. Uh, let's see, proc SQL, so we did it all over again. <clears throat> so let's say we want to create a table again. And I'll call this accounts one. The same thing as. So this time we won't actually specify the variables we want. We'll just have them all printed <clears throat> from savings. But let's say I don't want the value column. Well, instead of typing in the table at the under select all the variables I want, because a lot of times you may have hundreds of variables and it's just not feasible to type them all in. A lot of times it's more convenient just to to have the table displayed minus like the, the columns that you don't want. So this is where you this is where you do this. Under from the, the data set that we're gonna work with, we open up parentheses, we type in drop equals, and in this case value is what I don't want. The column value I don't want to show up. Everything else I want. <clears throat> Semicolon and then quit. Now I'm just gonna run this. Oops. So I can just select it and then come up to the top. The drop down, run, run selection. And here we go. It printed out everything except for that one column that I did not want. <clears throat> so you can see the amounts just kind of like in random orders. It's actually it's actually grouped by uh or it actually goes in order of uh, the person's name in alphabetical, Matthews, and then followed by Rogers. Uh, but what if I wanted to kind of be in some kind of ascending or descending order by some value? Well, for this, I want to use amount, and I want it to be in ascending order. So let me go back to my program. And so now to specify uh, how I want everything ordered, we do this under... Where we specified <clears throat> what our where our data set was coming from, uh, or where our data is coming from, rather. So here we just type in order by, and then the variable name we want to we want to use. So for this we want amount, and I can either do for this ascending or descending for the example. So I'll do ascending. So you literally just type in ascending. So it's order by the amount by ascending. So let's run this again. And there you go. Now it gives it our same data set again, but now you can, as you see on the right hand side, under amount, everything goes in order as far as, uh, in ascending order rather. So it starts off at 2000 and works all the way up to $180,000. Uh, like I said, these are very basic things, but I mean, you could just imagine if you're working with thousands and thousands and thousands of observations across, you know, tens or hundreds of, of variables, SQL can save you quite a bit of time just by using simple little keywords.